Perfect. All right, everybody. So just go ahead and getting started with our credit masterclass. I uh, just want to invite everybody on now. Every Friday we're doing these. Um, but for right now, what we're going to talk about is home ownership in this uh, master class. And we're also going to give you some credit tips on how to build uh, better credit so that you can qualify for the home of your dreams. Okay. So we all know that part of the American dream is home ownership, but we must understand that poor credit and financial illiteracy keep you from living the American dream. Why does it do that? Because it keeps you from funding the American dream. There's not very many people that can save up $400,000 for a house. We're most likely going to end up needing the funding to get that piece of property and start living that American dream, right? But in this new economy, there are several barriers that are preventing home ownership. Uh, 42 million people have a score in the 500s or lower. Look, that's one in four people, y'all. Uh, one in five have a mistake on their credit worth at least 50 points. That's going to keep you from home ownership. 53 of adults are, 53% uh, of adults are financially anxious. That means that there's a lot of uncertainty dealing with their finances. And two thirds of families lack an emergency fund. Now, listen, if you don't have an emergency fund, you're not even on your road. You're not even on the road to building wealth because one financial emergency will start you back over at the very beginning or have you very desperate looking for uh, borrowing money and things like that. So you also want to build up the emergency fund. So when we see statistics like this, 78% of adults living paycheck to paycheck, we know that this is a new economy and we there's got to be new things. There's got to be something else that we can do to help increase the home ownerships. And three, of five, three out of five adults do not keep a budget for closing costs. Now, listen, if you're at the closing table and you haven't budgeted, then you're going to be right back at your kitchen table, okay? Because you're going to have to start all over or you're going to have to delay that process and come back to the closing table later, all right? So we're going to cover some of these things here in this master class. Um, thanks so much for tapping on in. I see more people coming on in. Go ahead and drop your city where you are tuning in from. We do appreciate it. And go ahead and share this on your page, share this on your story so we can increase the number of homeowners in our communities. Definitely appreciate it. Now, here's why credit uh, is important to your community. All right, so the higher the credit scores, the better the community. I'll say it again, the higher the credit scores, the better the community, all right? And I'm not just talking about because the dogs have sweaters with turtlenecks, <laughs> okay? Here's some reasons why, because better credit scores allow people to become home owners. Now, when you own your home, your property tax goes to improve your area, all right? So it is all about making sure that you are um, spending and investing money where you live. Now, sometimes if you're renting, you might be paying that money, but it's going to another person, it's going to another area code, it's going to another place, and it's not being reinvested back in your community. Now, uh, you're more likely to vote in local elections and decide your leaders. Uh, you're, uh, you have more pride, you know, in your home. You know, it's very rare that you're going to see somebody that is renting a home and that is spending the time to, to paint the outside, to, uh, to, to furnish the uh, outside, the lawn, to make sure that they're um, even mowing the grass, <laughs> you know, or trimming the hedges or making sure that the, the outside is just very pretty, so to speak, right? Because it's not yours. You don't really own it. You just live there temporarily. So you're not really interested in things like that. It's kind of like a rental car. Okay. The only time you wash a rental car is because you don't want them to, you know, keep your money from, keep your deposit from you, <laughs> but you're not going to love on it. You're not going to vacuum it out. You know, you're not going to make sure it has that new car smell because it's not yours. Right. And you also see lower crime rates and better schools where there's high ownership rates instead of high rental rates. Again, that goes back into just having pride in the community. Also goes into um, voting your local leaders, vote, voting for the sheriff in that area. So we see all kinds of things when more people um, actually own the homes in their community. So why is homeownership important? Now, this is an age old debate. That's the rent versus own debate, right? 
So, you know, me personally, I would say it just depends on how long you plan on living in a specific place. But overall, the overarching theme is that it is better to own a home, right? So that's why a lot of people are aspiring to become homeowners. It's considered an investment. Your home can actually appreciate in value. It provides uh, financial benefits such as home equity, and it can even improve your credit profile. One of the things included in your credit profile, which you'll learn in just a second, is a credit mix. So you're looking for things that are not just a whole bunch of credit cards, not just a bunch of auto loans, but they're also looking to see, do you have a mortgage? Do you have any student loans? Do you have any medical debt? And things like that. They want to see different kinds of experiences on your credit report. So owning a home is definitely a must. It is financially wiser than renting long term. It's cheaper than renting in most markets. It allows for more personal freedom with your home. If you want to paint that exterior, like I was mentioning earlier, you can do so because you, know, you can't really paint the house if you don't own it unless you get permission. But um, and also, like if you want to have animals, if you want to do some expansion, um, you know, any kind of renovation, you can do so. You can also have, uh, you know, you can choose to rent it out if you wanted to, um, make it an income producing property. You know, there's all kinds of different things that you can do when you own it. And it gives you pride of owning your own home. And it can save you a lot of money on your taxes as well, because now you can write off the interest on your mortgage, right? So you can't write off anything when you're renting, but when you own your home, you're able to do that. So there's a lot of different things. So let's look at an action plan. Okay, and then we're gonna cover this. So we first wanna identify your credit score, determine how much you can afford, want to um, budget and save for your down payment, want to get pre-approved, begin your home search, find a realtor, visit open houses and virtually tour homes, submit an offer, get a home inspection, get an appraisal and renegotiate before you close the sale. All right. So we want we want to do these things in order to get on that path to home ownership. All right. So you can take a screenshot of this screen here but we're going to dive deeper into each one of these in just a moment. Okay. So let's go ahead and do that. So before you begin your home show, uh, your home search, here's some proven steps for choosing the right home. Very important here. So you want to consider the renovation potential decks, floors, kitchen, bathrooms, because sometimes you're going to find a home that really doesn't, uh, it's just not my dream home. It's not what I envisioned but you want to consider that everything can change with a renovation, okay? So if it doesn't have like that, that outdoor patio that you wanted, hey, we can add that. Um, what about the floors? Maybe you fell in love with this home, but you didn't think about, hey, we're going to have to replace some of that linoleum with tile or hardwood, and that you didn't factor that into the price. Uh, but maybe the kitchen, maybe you fell in love with the kitchen, but the bathrooms need to be renovated. So these are all things that you want to consider when choosing the right home. Of course, you want to consider the size and the storage. You know, do you have a large family? Are you planning for a large family? You know, do you want every child to have their own bedroom? Do you want your dog to have its own room? And what about storage? Does it have a basement? Does it have a garage? Does it have, you know, a she shed, right? That's the, you know, one of the latest trends that you know, all the wives want is a she shed in the back so they can have all their arts and crafts out there, right? Well, um, an important fact here is uh, not to get caught up on the bells and the whistles, okay? N nice things that don't provide everyday value. Like, oh, it has like an awning and oh, it has this, this beautiful window that looks over this part right here in the backyard and it has a bird feeder. And, you know, these things that are really nice, but don't bring you everyday value. You want to go ahead and decide when you're comparing homes, is this just a bells, bells and whistles kind of thing that I like? Or is this something that really is going to bring value to me every day? Then you want to rank the neighborhood against others. So you want to think about the commute to work. Very important there. You know, is this neighborhood close to your job? Or are you going to have to commute an hour, uh, 30 minutes, uh, 20, 10 minutes? And then I think about the school ratings and how far away the schools are from that neighborhood. Okay. Uh, and also you want to think about the crime rate. Okay. So remember I said that when you see more home ownership in a community, you see a lower crime rate. So now you want to consider how many other people are homeowners in this area, you know, is, and, and then you also want to look at just the crime rate and there's different websites that can actually tell you uh, and give scores um, based on the community 
uh, as, as far as different crime rates and school ratings and things like that. That's why you really want to narrow down a great realtor. So if you're a realtor, you know, go ahead and put your information down in the comment section. Okay, go ahead and put your name, you know, your website, your phone number, you know, your slogan, whatever you want to do, put that in the comment section, because we're going to have a lot of people watching this masterclass looking for ways and tips to go ahead and make their first home purchase. So they're going to be looking for you. We want to make sure we help them make that connection. So here's some questions you want to ask yourself when choosing the right realtor. You know, how is their marketing? You know, um, do they do they have a website? Do they have a professional headshot? Or does it look like, you know, they just barely got started and, you know, they just have a selfie, you know, as their professional head. No, we want to make sure that someone professional took the picture because that's how, you know, people are taking their business seriously. Right. But how is their marketing? Does it scream prestige? Does it say, um, you know, I'm going to find that house of your dreams or does it say I'm in it just for the money? Okay, so you can kind of feel that vibe from people um, by asking some of these other questions, like how meaningful are their conversations? Are they asking more things about you and what you want, or are they just making suggestions? Do they listen to your concerns? Uh, do they own their own home? Have they been through this credit and have they been through this home ownership journey before? Now, I'm not saying that just because they don't have their own home that they can't be a great realtor, but it is great to have somebody that's been through all the pains and the frustrations of finding a home for themselves because they understand and they have that they'll understand certain nuances that you just can't get without going on that journey. What are others saying about them? You know, what are their reviews? Um, you know, if someone referred you to this realtor, what do they say about them? Right. So you want to have those testimonials. Then uh, do they know about FHA, down payment assistant programs and various other programs to help you get into that home? So if they don't have any familiarity with these programs, you know, they're probably not in your best interest to work with because you can potentially be leaving a lot of money uh, either on the table or you can be paying a lot more than you need to. Um for that house, you know, the government is here to give you a few different things and um, and benefits, down payment assistance, the FHA program, the, you know, the, the if you're a veteran, you know, there's down payment assistance programs for veterans. So you want to ask them about those kinds of programs and see if they know about them. So after we got all that out of the way, we want to submit an offer and prepare. And if you have a good real estate agent, then they're going to be able to present the best offer in a more compelling way to help you pay the less amount for that property. Okay, this is going to be an emotional journey. Okay, so be prepared just in case, you know, something happens and it falls through. But again, this is what your realtor is for or your real estate agent is for. Okay, because there's a difference between a realtor and a real estate agent. Okay, so a realtor has gone through a little bit more certifications, uh, but a real estate agent, hey, you'll be just fine if that is just a real estate agent. And I don't want to get into the weeds of things, the differences, because they both can offer you a home. All right. And um, so you're going to need tools to help close the deal. And that's what your real estate agent is there for. You're going to need financial discipline while you wait. OK, so one particular thing here is you're going to need that down payment. You're going to need to sit on that down payment for at least three months. Now, I've seen some uh, mortgage uh, loan officers suggest sitting on that down payment for six months, but either way, they want to see that you have possession of this down payment and you don't need it. Okay, so if you just got that down payment, that five thousand, that ten thousand dollars today, and it's in your bank account right now, and they're gonna, and you're going to use that for a down payment to close next week, no, 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 they don't want to see that. They want to see that you've had this money in your account for a few months. All right, that kind of proves your financial strength. And that you, you're not really desperate for that kind of money. Um, and it helps them feel more secure and less risk um, to give you the money for your for your um, for the mortgage. Now, and another great tip here, not a lot of people think about this one, but you want to select more than one dream home so that if one deal falls through, because I remember on our home search, we had we went through about three different homes in each deal. We either got beat out by just a small percentage or something came up at the very last minute. But, you know, we finally uh, settled on um, a house that we really liked in the area that we really liked. But 
lastly once the offer is accepted you want to schedule the inspection oh my gosh yo the inspection is so crucial okay i'll also advise you because your mortgage company is going to you know request this and require this but you want to definitely interview if you can the uh, home inspector so you want to go with a good home inspector not just somebody that has terrible reviews not just someone doing it for the money you never want to work with people that are just doing it for the money you always want to work with people that truly want the best for their clients okay and just because this inspector maybe they maybe you didn't hire them directly maybe you know the mortgage company did you still want to make sure that they are doing the best job possible so um, because it's going to be very very important you know, even the seller of the home may not know things that the inspector can find out, such as foundation issues, issues with the roof. Maybe it's leaking into a wall that you can't see. Um, you know, they're going to look at things like pipes. They're going to uh, look at things to make sure that it meets safety code, that you don't have lead in the paint, uh, asbestos in the siding, you know, things like that. You actually uh, really need that inspection to go through. And then you're going to need to get the home appraised and assessed. And I, I say get two appraisals, you know, because one person might be using a certain kind of appraisal method, whereas it's more appropriate to use a different kind in the market. But because you have two different appraisals, now you can come back with a good negotiation. Okay, especially if there's issues or repairs. You don't want to buy a house that has issues that are only uncovered months after you purchased it because now the homeowner that sold it to you is not liable for anything because you already signed the papers. It is yours now. Sorry, Charlie. All right. So you want to definitely make sure that the inspection and the appraisal are all set and come back to the table if there's anything. So let's say, you know, the... Um, Inspection comes back and says, hey, you're going to need at least $10,000 worth of work. And the appraisal comes back and says, hey, this is actually you know, 10, worth $10,000 less than what they're offering. Well, then you need to go back to the table and say, hey, we need $20,000 off of this price to even make this make sense for us because now we got to pay to have it up to code. And the market really isn't even asking for this extra $10,000. Just an example. But that's why you want to have these things in there. But you want to close the sale pay your mortgage on time and celebrate your journey to the 800 club because most people in the 800 club have a mortgage on record or have some kind of long-term um, installment payments on their credit report. That's how you can kind of get to that 800 club. But as you know, according to the poll by USA Today, 57% of renters say that the two reasons why they haven't purchased a home are they lack good credit and they can't afford the down payment. But there's so many programs out there that help you not only get better credit, but also help you afford that down payment. So that's what I want to go ahead and uh, talk about today is just the importance of credit in this master class. So we're talking about the ability to access goods and services now, but pay for them later. And that's exactly what a mortgage is. You're taking advantage of something now, but you're paying for it over time. Okay, so FICO scores, they range from 300 to 850. The higher, the better. Usually your mortgage lender is going to look for a 700 or better credit score. So if you're not in the 700 club, expect a higher interest rate. Okay, but credit, that's how we buy land, property, vehicles, fund businesses, fund education, fund healthcare, fund our lifestyle, travel. So credit is not just about getting the home that you want, but it is truly about living the American dream and being able to access that at an early age. The first thing you want to do is check your credit report. You're going to be looking for revolving debt, for example, credit cards. And you want to think of it as revolving because as soon as you pay down on it, well, the balance is available again. Okay, so it's just it keeps going back and uh, back around again. Uh, and installment debt, you want to check your credit report for installment debt. That's like a car, a house note, because once you pay it, eventually you pay it off. It doesn't come back like revolving debt. All right, charge-offs, that's canceled debt, collections, debt that's been sold to a collection agency, inquiries, any attempts to get new credit, debt that doesn't belong to you. Okay, so you always want to look for different things that are on your credit report that you are not familiar with. You could be a victim of fraud, right? Or you could just be a victim of erroneous reporting by a, um, by a company that maybe even got your name mixed up or your social mixed up. Right? So you want to look for these kinds of things. What goes into your score? Payment history, that accounts for 35% or 192 points. Credit utilization or 30%, that accounts for about 165 points. The age of your credit, that's 15% or about 82 points. 
the credit mix that's 10 percent or about 55 percent 55 points i mean uh new credit that's 10 percent or again 55 points and now these are all things that go into factoring your credit score right so once you have all of these things let's say you do a great job with every single one of them you max every category out that's where you get the 850 credit or that perfect credit from all right so bad credit can raise your mortgage rate by hundreds of thousands of dollars. It affects basically anything that has interest attached to it. So you want to always have the best credit score. So how do you increase it? Well, let's learn these helpful tips and strategies and our secret weapon, which has helped over 50,000 people. We're going to let you know what exactly that is. All right. But first, if this information has been helpful, put some ones in the comment section. Drop a one, all right? If this has been helpful, we need to know that, you know, you've been impacted or maybe you've uh, seen something and you're like, man, that is a great tip. You know, I'm going to take a screenshot of every single one of these and I'm going to start my home ownership journey. Okay, with just the information I gave so far, because now we're about to get a little further, but we need to know that so far we've been making an impact, all right? So um, let's go ahead and keep going on here. All right. Perfect, perfect, perfect. There we go. So let's go ahead and get right on into this. Uh, these tips that have helped so, so many people because I'm starting to see, there we go, the ones coming on in. Yeah, thank you, Samantha. Thank you, Jamil. Appreciate that. All right, so let's go ahead and get on into it so now we're talking about these credit tips and tricks each tip affects one of these five categories so disputing negative items is number one okay so writing dispute letters it can be kind of, kind of time consuming you know and not knowing your rights and not knowing everything that you can actually do what things can be challenged what ones to leave alone but that's probably the best thing to do in order to help your payment history is dispute some of those negative ones or maybe missed payments they have to prove that you missed it okay now you can also ask for an increase that's going to help with your utilization because now you have a more of a limit um so you basically lower your utilization which will increase your score um this can lead to an instant boost if you call your credit card companies and just ask for an increase but if you have negative payment history you may not get it and they may actually um put an inquiry on your credit report because before they increase your limits, they want to see what your credit score is now. And that might also put a negative item. So you got to be careful with that. But you want to become an authorized user as well. OK, so asking a friend or a relative to get added to an account that's in good standing. Uh, it has its risks, too. Like if that person isn't paying their bills, well, now it's going to reflect on your credit report as though you're not paying your bills. OK, and it can also be hard to be a, pri a primary trade holder. Um, but this is a good segue into becoming a primary trade holder, which is what you truly want to have the most impact on your credit. Okay. But now you want to get a secured card. This can be helpful if you can't get a primary credit card, but it just doesn't report as strong as a normal one. Now, um, you can also report your rent payments. You're living there anyway. You might as well get paid for it, right? Or get credit for it, you know, just for these rent payments. But it can be tricky to know which company is trustworthy, which one's going to report to all three bureaus. And a lot of these places, they charge like this, this a very high fee in order to have your rent payments report. Um, what about closing old credit cards? You know, this is a game that you have to play from the very beginning because you have to know, are you going to actually use this card long term or is it just a short term thing because you don't want to end up paying an annual fee for a card that you're not going to use? Okay, if it doesn't have points, it doesn't have travel benefits, doesn't give you, you know, miles or anything like that, eventually you're going to find a card that will and, you know, maybe a card that gives you cash back and you're going to start using that card, but you're still paying a fee for this card over here that you no longer use. It. So you want to think before you get that card, but don't close old cards. That's going to lower your utilization ratio. It's going to lower your credit age. And you can also seek professional help. OK, no, not that kind of professional help. OK, even though working on your credit can make you feel like you're going crazy. OK, but their experts are here and available, uh, but it can be hard to tell who to trust. You know, that's that's the biggest thing. So I'm giving you some pros and some cons about each tip, uh, each tip and each trick here. But now we're going to get into the fintech solution that we call Novay. We inspire people to get more out of life. We educate them on ways to go about it and we provide them an opportunity to make it happen. 
All right. You don't have to be an expert or anything, but you can check out some of our testimonials. We have real people, real results. I know you're going to Google Nove Money reviews here. You'll see near perfect reviewers, review scores, hundreds on all platforms, thousands of reviews on Facebook and an A plus rating with the Better Business Bureau. Um, so what do we do? Well, we help people with uh, an exclusive partnership with a company called Credit Likes. All right. So these uh, will basically generate monthly disputes for you. So you don't have to decide, is this something I should dispute? Is this not? Should I do it? Um, how do I do it? What do I say? When do I send it? You don't have to worry about any of that because you're going to get an online money manager, debt elimination tool, financial wealth guide, uh, credit building resources, three monthly, three score reports. So it has all three Equifax, TransUnion, and Experian, daily credit monitoring, text and email alerts. So you're also going to get those um, and also credit score builder planner simulator as well. So that lets you know if I spend an extra two hundred dollars on my credit card, how is it going to affect my score? Right. What's going on, Hakeem? Thanks for checking on in. Um, so, yeah, these are things that you need so that you can maintain a great score and be on top of it. And it, it also lets you know, hey, if you pay two hundred dollars onto your credit card, this is what you can expect as a boost in your points. So this is all important, but you also get identity theft protection, 1 million in fraud insurance. Man, there's so many things that come with it, but here's how you enroll. You know, it's 239 to enroll, $89 a month. You can pay as you go. There's no monthly contract. If you decide five, uh, you know, five months down the line, you don't want to continue. Your credit score is right where it needs to be. Like what happened to me, it only took five months to go from apartment living to moving into our brand new house. I think actually, I think we had one other owner, to be honest with you. But, you know, it only took five months of credit work for me to get there. So I know that it's possible. Of course, we can't guarantee things for other people, but I'm just telling you my story. That's what happened. Now, you know, to get started, just get back with the person that's sharing this and just say, hey, I heard about credit likes. How do I enroll? You know, I went to the website and said I needed to have a referral person. So I need that link. Right. And you're going to set up your first consultation with that with a person. Then they're going to kind of give you more information about credit likes, how it works. They're going to help you enroll. Then you're going to schedule your onboarding with uh, our credit likes team. They're going to pull your credit report, analyze your information and get your dispute letter sent out. And then you can start building positive credit and tackling utilization, which is saying, hey, lower the usage of your credit limits, lower the usage of your cards. OK. All right. I rock CEO in the building. How are we doing? Thank you. Thank you for checking it out here. So now we're talking about my no bay disputes. This is the second option that we have when we're tackling um, a better credit score. OK. And matter of fact, you know, it looks like we have a testimonial coming on in. Uh, Samantha Lewis says same for us about six months of full concentration and focus. That's what I'm talking about. Y'all clap it up for Samantha in the comment section. She is a witness at this program definitely works. Uh, but one thing I want to also mention, when she said six months, it, it reminded me that if you have no results in six months, meaning that we don't delete anything in six months, you actually get a full refund. A full refund, y'all. That just blew my mind because, you know, a lot of credit companies, they say, hey, you know, um, you know, we're going to work. We're going to do the best that we can. You know, we can't guarantee results. We can't uh, make promises and things like that. But if you take um, what we are offering here and you say, hey, we're going to offer you a full refund if we have no results here in six months, then you know that we're going to definitely try our best. And that's something where I really just love to see people putting their money where their mouth is. All right. OK, so now we're going on to the second one, which is the Nobe Disputes Manager. This is the future of credit. It's the new way. Why do I say it's the future? Because AI is the future. Artificial intelligence is the future. And even if you do not like it, um, the last time you had a plane ride, I guarantee you the pilot did not fly most of the way. Okay. They were using ro computer programming, robots, artificial intelligence to guide that plane and have it on its way. Okay. You ever heard of autopilot? Where do you think autopilot comes from? Okay. <laughs> it's automatically flying the plane. All right. But we also have self driving cars. 
We have, I seen a robot put eyelashes on. Okay, there's so many different things now that computers are doing. And now we have computer help to build our credit and actually do some good here. So it can dispute any account on all three bureaus. It's smart imports your credit. Uh, report. So it analyzes all the negative items, no hard inquiry. So it's not going to show up on your credit report when they uh, pull it in. Okay. AI technology knows which accounts are hurting and which ones to leave alone. Unlimited disputes is professional is more effective than just the generic 609 letters that your credit company is probably using. And it makes credit more affordable. As you can tell, it's almost half the price here. 99 bucks to get started, $49 a month. Just get back with the person that you know, share this with you and say, hey, you know, I want some of that AI software to help build my credit. And both of these items, they include credit monitoring so you can build, track, and boost your credit score. You know, this is where you're seeing some of these features in. So I just want to let everybody know you don't have to go out and pay for an additional service to monitor your credit. About 99% of these companies out here, you go to uh, fix your credit, they're going to say, okay, first thing you need to do is go sign up for Identity IQ or go sign up for Smart Credit or go get a free trial over here so we can pull in your credit report. And then you got to pay an extra 20 to 30 to 50 to $40 per month just for the monitoring. Okay. We include that with both of our unique fintech solutions. So that's very important to know. But other than that, I just want to say welcome home, everybody. Okay, we really do appreciate you uh, for tuning in and sticking this out. Go ahead and share, share, share the love, share the information with somebody that you care about. Put it on your timeline, put it on your story, wherever you can. Send it in a text message to somebody that you know that is looking to buy a home soon. Share it with a real estate agent so they can share it to their network. But we got to get the word out about how better credit can impact you when it's time for home ownership. And we also have to get the tools out there that are reputable, that are life changing. And we want to help people hit that next level. Our upcoming masterclass schedule, April 1st, we're covering FICO versus Vantage. April 14th, we're covering how to beat credit card interest. And April 21st, what is credit utilization? We're going to tackle all of those things, but I will see you on the next masterclass. Get back with the person that got you on here for more information. Peace.